So this is just a quick fun tutorial where we're going to create this small graph uh, sphere animation. So first I'm going to create a sphere and this is what we're going to use to map the cubes onto. So next I'm going to create a cloner and a cube. I'm going to make the cube a child of the cloner and I'm just going to set my display to go around shading lines. I'm going to reduce the size of the cube down to 22 centimeters so it's a lot smaller. Uh, the cloner, I'm going to set it to object mode and I'm going to drag and drop the sphere into the object slot. And I'm just going to hide the sphere. So we can still adjust the radius of the sphere and the cloners react accordingly. So we have a problem with the cloners. Uh, basically they bunch up at the top. So I'm going to change the type of sphere from standard to icosahedron and I need to go back to the cloner and reselect vertex to see the update so this gives us a much more even distribution the problem is they're all facing different directions to fix this problem we're going to set the up vector to plus y plus and this gives us a much more orderly uh, arrangement so next I'm going to go to the cube and choose fillet and I'm going to reduce the fillet radius down to one centimeters and the subdivisions I'm going to set to two so there's not too many polys on the screen so this is our starting point uh, we can adjust the radius and you'll notice we have spaces in between the cubes so we want to close these gaps and to do that uh, we increase the segments on the sphere so 41 seems to give quite a good result Maybe Maybe we could go higher, 47, just gauge it uh, visually. So next I'm going to click on the cloner and I'm going to add a plane effector. I'm going to set the fall off to sphere and I'm just going to look at my sphere radius. Uh, it's almost 200 so I'm just going to set it to 200. So my plane effector radius, I want it twice the size is my sphere so I'm going to set the size to 400 centimeters so it's pretty big uh, parameters I'm going to get rid of position for now and I'm going to set scale check uniform scale and give it minus 0.4 so if I move this effector we can see the cubes reacting scaling down being influenced by this effector Next, uh, I'm going to check position again. I'm going to get rid of the Y position and I'm going to adjust the Z position. So I'm just going to move my plane effector out slightly and I'm going to reduce the fall off. Then I'm going to go back to my parameter and just play with Z. There we go. So basically adjust the z-coordinate until um, the cubes kind of bunch together and it looks like there's a smaller sphere inside of the large sphere. So about here maybe. And if I move this along z, we get this cool animation. So that's basically the animation. Uh, all we have to do is keyframe the plane effector, the z-coordinate. So start at zero, about here. Control click to place a keyframe. Go to frame 120 and this is about the end frame here. Place a keyframe. I'm just going to double click the traffic lights to hide the plane effector. And our animation is looking pretty nice. So that's basically the end of the animation. So in my animation at the beginning, I had a turntable camera. I can show you how to create that quickly if you're interested, but that's basically the end of the tutorial for the MoGraph section. So I'm just gonna create a camera and I'm gonna create a spline, a circle. I'm gonna set the orientation to X, Z. Just increase the radius. And I'm gonna click camera and go to tags align to spline I'm going to drag and drop this circle into the spline path 
So the camera is basically now attached uh, to the circle spline path. So I can just call this maybe cam circle. Uh, the camera is facing the wrong way. So we can actually just click on the camera, go to tags and give it a target. The target object, this is where we drag and drop the corner. And now our camera is basically facing the corner. So I'm just going to click on this view and just check this icon here to activate the camera. And if we want to bring the camera in closer, we can basically just adjust the cam circle, the spline path radius. So we can get pretty close up on it. And then to animate this, whoops, maybe that's too close. Just going to adjust the radius. Uh, we can use the align to spline to animate this. So basically, when you rotate position, from 0 to 100 is one full rotation of the camera. If you look at the top view, you can see the camera rotating around the sphere. So basically you just want a bit of animation, maybe 95 to 100. So there's a slight rotation as the effects taking place. So you can actually adjust the heading of the spline path to make it face towards the camera a bit more. And that's basically it. And then if you want to learn how to do the material, the reflective material, I suggest you check out my uh, awesome reflections tutorial. It shows you how to use HDRI maps with the sky object to create really good reflections. So if you found this tutorial useful, please share it. And thanks for watching.